Welcome to the Passion Behind the Art Show. It's all about diving in with individuals to learn the story behind their passion. It's your host, Daryl Pena. It's another week, another amazing guest, and another opportunity for me to bring you value through someone else's story. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. Oh my goodness. Episode 100 live event was amazing. So much value. Each guest broke down just various ways on on how they turned their passion into dollars. And I mean, I'm just so thankful, so grateful for each guest. So grateful for each person that came on and joined like it was just an amazing experience yes i was beat after just streaming live for nine hours it was crazy but it was well worth it you guys are in for a treat a truly a treat so get ready for an amazing experience on our on how each guest turned their passion into dollars Dan Lee, um, lettering artist, like he has a large following, and if you're familiar with that community, like you know who Dan Lee is, like he is one of the best lettering artists out there. So I'm glad that he could just come on and kind of drop some 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 insight of how he used his um, creativity to generate revenue. Um, he's here, and it looks like he's ready. Let's do it. Yo. What's going on, man? I just heard some really, really kind things you were saying about me, and I, uh, I am very humbled right now. And also, I think this is the first time I've ever done Instagram Live, <laughs> so I'm kind of like <laughs> trying to make sure. Oh man, it's not like our, um, it's not like our pa- our podcast recording. You remember to record? <laughs> nah, I, you, I, you I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> Uh, for anyone like everyone tuning in here, uh, I was supposed to get on Gerald's podcast at Creative South, and I just like I had no idea he was on. Like, there's this one like the one pot like live podcast radio station that everyone you know everyone's supposed to know about that, and uh, and I didn't. And I'm texting him like, "Where are you, dude? Like, where are we supposed to be doing this thing?" <laughs> at the same time, he's like, uh, "Like, I completely left him hang." I. Dude, felt so bad. Yo, to be honest, I wasn't even talking about that, dude. Like, it's water under the bridge, brother. Like, don't even worry oh, but, about it, man. But that was especially haunting me today, <laughs> thinking about like this. Like, am I gonna do it again? Like, what if? <laughs> like, is there something I was supposed to? Oh, crap, dude. crap. Okay, maybe I just get on Instagram and it worked. I'm here, <laughs> dude. Oh, thanks I... for having me. I appreciate it a lot. Oh, for sure, man. For sure, for sure. I'm glad you're able to do this, man. Um, you're my guy. You already know, so it, it ain't no worries at all. Yeah, and so man. I, I know you know you're you're a beast at lettering. Um, I know you're super focused on a day job because you know you got a a, a large responsibility. But kind of give us mm-hmm. some insight on who you are. And how did you use your lettering skills to generate different types of revenue? Yeah, great question. Uh, so I am, for those who don't know me, I'm Dan. Uh, my background is really weird, but it, uh, as far as it like pertains to creativity and stuff, like I started, um, I started drawing super early, and then when it comes to things like lettering. Uh, I always thought of writing as drawing letters, like ever since I think I was like six years old. So it was almost like this very fluid thing through my through my years growing up. Like I was always drawing words, drawing little word logos and stuff. Hi, Graham. Um, and then uh, started going to school, went through the whole thing of like, are you like, should you follow your passion or should you follow your skills? And um, that whole conflict of uh, can you make a living doing creative things, doing things that you love, um, and like I honestly I think there's there there's a it's continues to be a complicated question, but it worked out really well in my in my life. I went to I ended up going to college for chemical engineering, graduated with a master's degree, and immediately decided 
that was not the deal for me at all, <laughs> you know, five years later into it. But the cool thing about that is like, I've always adopted this perspective of like everything that you do. I mean, nothing is, nothing is wasted. There's an opportunity of things to learn, whatever, you know, wherever you end up. And for me, like engineering has turned out to be like very good for design. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, a whole series of events unfolded. I managed to get my foot in the door um, to the design industry, despite having no, you know, formal training in that. I was just always doing it on the side. Um, and I think it was that passion and that drive for me um, kept me going. Started That's where I started doing Instagram in 2014, just constantly coming up with projects and pushing myself to try new things. And that that's what I think started turning into people noticing me, people offering me freelance jobs, which then turned into being able to actually put a portfolio together and start applying for um, real life internships and um, real life design jobs. So that's like a super high level. I ended up being very, it's like I was very consistent. I was pursuing it wherever I could um, and just putting it out where people could notice and just striving to be, you know, striving to always just push myself to be better and better. Um, and I think that's paid off by, yeah, I mean, it just opens doors. And then it's a lot about who you know at that point when you you, you get picked up by somebody featured here or there, uh, get on something like Dribble, And then anyway, does that kind yeah, of answer your question? Great, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm zoned in. I'm, you're doing great, man. So kind of give me some ways that you've used your lettering design skill to generate revenue like how have you made money with lettering yeah so i would say the 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 funnest project that i've done was well i don't know if i can talk about that yet hold on let me think about this <laughs> well don't, you don't have to get specific on a project but what did you like, like yeah, yeah, yeah work products like, like, kind of give me some kind of a rundown. Gotcha. For me, it's mostly been client work. It's been client work that opens the doors to other client work, or even for me, like looking for a full time gig. What I was looking for, you know, early in my design career was to be mentored by, you know, what I was thinking in my mind is real designers, but really just to get some business experience, you know, have a manager, someone who could speak that gotcha. language, because that is a weakness of mine. So I'm like, okay, I need, I need some mentorship. Um, so I got myself, uh, yeah, creating things with that in mind of trying to find people or get the, get people's attention who could then hire me. So probably looking at, uh, building out logos and mural designs was a big deal in my, wow, it's so funny to say like earlier career. <laughs> My career is really, it's not that old. Like, I feel older than, I feel like my career is almost too young for, like, where I am. Just, anyway, that is totally beside the point. Um, client work was a big deal. Uh, making products, making products is something that I still continue to aspire to because the times I've given it a shot, it's been, it's been fun. It's been, and it's been, it's been lucrative. But I think, like, my favorite thing about it is probably just the fact that you get to see people like either like with your stuff or if it's a t-shirt right, design, right. you know, they're wearing your stuff. So I definitely want to do more of that. Uh, and it certainly has been a nice, you know, putting out a limited edition run of something. Well, that's cool. So it's, so it's then, been uh, client work and creating products. So say someone wants to, that's correct. So someone wants to create products. Like um, what are some of the advice or some of the tips like you would give that's a great question first of all create something that you definitely would buy for yourself and i think when you can trust your taste and you can also see you know it's 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 this weird intersection of like do something unique but at the same time look at the market and see what people are buying and then how do you how do you do that thing where it's just enough of you but also just enough of the market that you um that you're creating something that people are actually going to buy. Uh, but I say like, you know, just be good, like emphasize quality over anything else. Don't go for the cheap buck. Do something that you'd be proud of. And I think um, that in my mind is always the stuff that sells. Like when people can look at the thing that you've made 
and they sense the passion from it or it speaks somehow to something that they really resonate with. Gotcha. So how important is having people to sell it to? I'd say it's pretty darn important. (laughs) Yeah, that, I mean, I'll be, I'll be frank. Like that's where I'm trying to learn more about that too. Like, how do you, how do you build an audience? You know, how do you make sure you're pandering to that or, you know, make sure that the kind who would buy something that you have. Um, And as far as building an audience, you know, my experience has been consistency. Like if people understand what you're about, if you just keep being about those things, um, that's the sort of consistency and brand that, um, that I think builds a loyal audience so that when you do create something that like lines up with that, and that's another thing, it line up with you to line up with your personal brand. I don't think I could go out and start selling like, you know, emo skatewear or something. Like, I just, I feel like that's not exactly my vibe. And it would come across very, like, disingenuous. Um, but, yeah, being, like, true to what I do, the kind of values that I would profess, um, and the things that people are used to seeing from me, you know, like, I definitely tend to go towards a certain type. After a while, you just develop a style. Um even though, like, for me, I'm all over the place. I enjoy the uh, challenge of trying new styles and not being as predictable. But honestly, I think being predictable can be really good for developing, like you said, the audience and letting people know what they can expect right. to see from you. And really, I think what they would request from you, if they're like, man, are you ever going to make a print of this or, like, make a T-shirt of that? So, <laughs> and I've got a lot of, like, thoughts yeah, that's cool though I'm... it's time to make an emo skatewear brand that's right <laughs> <laughs> just start taking notes <laughs> but that's cool though because like and it's funny hearing that from you because you you have a decent sized following so to hear that you're still you know pruning it and still working it out is good for those who don't have a decent sized following to hear because it's it's oh, ongoing. Yeah. It's an ongoing thing. Right, definitely. I would just say like consistency above all else. You know, even even if the numbers aren't what you expect, like there's so many ways to tweak an algorithm or try to chase the numbers. And sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. But either way, like honestly I think consistency and quality will always speak for themselves. And that way you always have a more loyal following, like whatever size it is. And really all you need is like a certain number. I don't remember what the, um, somebody uh, quoting, I'm probably quoting a famous designer here. I apologize to that famous designer that I don't remember who they are. Like you only need like a thousand, a thousand fans, I think, like who are invested. Right. Or it might have been a hundred. There's some I think it's I think it's a thousand. I think it I think it is. I, I heard something similar to that. You've heard yeah, it heard too, right? To I feel like an idiot right yeah. now. I can't remember who that was. So so no, it's not me, Ruska. <laughs> 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 but it, you know, earlier in the, the earlier um interviews, there was one thing that was I kept on emphasizing. And I feel yeah. like you're a good example of that. Like everybody has this concept of like, okay, quit your job, quit your J job and go go pursue this thing, quit your day job and go pursue this thing. And I was like basically telling everyone like, you don't have to do that. Like not everyone has to go quit their day job. But what I, right, would, right. what I would recommend is go do something that you enjoy doing. And I feel like that's what you did. Yeah, I, I definitely, I would agree with that big time. Um, I know it's so, it's so funny. Like I thought it was kind of an all or nothing when I first was starting out, you know, especially coming from, um, engineering and being like oh my gosh am i stuck here forever like the question of does my does pursuing my passion mean like doing nothing else Hmm. does it mean always just having it or or on the flip side only ever doing it on the side i'm like is there any in between and uh, the thing i'm realizing more than ever is this is almost just like a life tip i think um we tend to think about these things in terms of like people that we've seen who are really successful one way or another and we'll be like man, I want to be the next Steve Jobs. I want to be the next uh, Jessica Hish, to speak designer language here. Um, But really, like, that should never be our goal, I think, because all you're ever going to really be, if if that's your goal, you're only ever going to be, at best, you know, the second best Steve Jobs. 
or the second best Jessica Hish. So why not like just, I would say like aim for like, what is the best thing that you can be and carve that out? Like don't, don't study other people's paths to try to copy that so much as study it and see what are the things you can take that they did well that fit into like how you work and the things that you love. Um, and so, you know, my path is super weird and I would never recommend that to anyone else. You know, it's not like, Oh yeah. You know, if you want to get followers on Instagram, you got to go to college for five years and something that you don't know if you want to do for the rest of your life. And then, you know, just to have an existential crisis as soon as you graduate and start drawing in a notebook and putting it online. That worked out for me, or so, uh, you know, to the extent that my life is working out. But, uh, I, I, dude, it's not I, I mean, the I, same. I feel like, um, to some extent, and I can attest to a lot what you did because I also went to school for something completely different from graphic design. Yeah, yeah. I went to school for architecture. You know what I mean? So, so and, you know, that same engineering kind of background. So I, technical I, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand where you're coming from, but I feel like there's ways to kind of, and I think that's one thing you did, there's ways to kind of hack into these industries that you really want to get in. And that's right. by being consistently sharing that type of work. And that's what you did. That's right. And that's what I recommend to anyone too. It's like, make the time, first of all, like, you're not going to have the time to do these things, but you'll want to because it's the kind of thing that keeps you up till 3 a.m., you know, because you just love it so much. So you will continue to be working on your craft. But yeah, like you got to carve out that space, know what you know, what like sets you on fire. And then if you if you pursue it, I mean, that's that quote. I, um, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And so it's just be always preparing. Like there's no downside to that. You love the preparation process because it's something you love. And then ultimately opportunity will come along. Like I do believe that. I think mm -hmm. if you're always prepared, then that means like even the smallest spark of opportunity could set you off on what other people might look at and be like, wow, how'd you get so lucky? Well, <laughs> spent like that. five years uh, doing this thing when nobody yeah, was watching. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you mean that five-year project of getting to this point? Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, I love that because say, okay, you're not a designer and you want to hack into the the fitness industry. Like, mm -hmm. just get into that crowd. Share your what you do to get fit. Just do that for a very long time. And you just, like, can you imagine five years later just being able to say, voila, this is what I've been doing. Right, exactly. And I think... One really important caveat, not caveat, but addition to what you're saying too is like the community of the people who also find that to be their passion. That is so important. I think just if for nothing else, the fact that they understand the struggle and or the passion. I feel like if, if you're passionate about something, that means you've also hit several pain points in your life related to being passionate about it. You know, whether that's like a, should I be doing this for the rest of my life? Right. Or even just like, oh, I'm hitting a plateau and I need to get better. Like all these, I feel like it's, uh, I think if you track the the origin of the, the word passion, I feel like it, it goes into that, like the pain that is associated with just being so driven to something. And so for that reason, like finding the people who feel similarly, you know, the people who have that passion as well, um, they will be, if nothing else, that safety net and that like, the guiding light that keeps you going. And then at best, they're the ones who help you open doors to new things or, and then, you know, we get to do stuff like what we're doing right. along the way. It's Just true. It's true. It's true. So immerse, those relationships. immerse yourself in that, that world for lack yeah. of a better word. So me and my wife, we're planning to do like some serious traveling, like some month, go travel for months. Now it's down the line, but she's literally immersed herself in that world you know what i mean just just, just yeah. immersed herself like it's a part of her that's that's her language and i feel like if you want to do something like that just immerse yourself in that world it doesn't like i know a lot this is very design driven because i'm a designer he's a designer and that's mostly the people i know but right. if you're not a designer you're watching this and you want to go for this thing kind of immerse yourself in that world. absolutely dude that is you can't go wrong and and 
that's the nice thing about finding the people who are truly passionate about this too, is they're not going to turn you down. You know, we love this thing, whether that's design, whether that's fitness, those people will love it. And like, they'll love to find people who feel the same way and connect there. And so it'll tell you one of two things. One, like, these are my people. I found it. Or two, like, oh yeah, no, definitely. This is not my thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, these people are great, but um, I'm, I'm out. But like, that, but that's, really, that's really, thing, like, though, if that's, that's what it's like to be passionate, you know. But that's also a good thing because then you you put yourself out there. You 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 actually took the shot, and you now know for sure. And I think exactly. And, and something you said about the pain points. I I, I did a quick little video about this, and I, I I'm a, I'm there with you. I feel like we all show like the highlights, the good the good stuff, the when we we're balling in the quote unquote. But, like, the more you put yourself out there, like, the more, you know, like, the more roadblocks you're going to have, the more no's, the more, you know, head scratchers, there's more opportunity for that. But you still get wins. Dude, I couldn't say it better myself. So It's I, worth. Go ahead. No, I just can say, like, it is worth the pain. And, like, the benefits of it just always outweigh. And, and you, it gives you a good perspective for all the pain along the way and, and like difficult things. Like it gives you a capacity, I think, for dealing with tough stuff in life, period. Right, right. right. So you guys, whoever's out there, you're going to get no's. You're going to get doors closed. You're going to feel like, oh, I can't take this anymore. Whatever the case, they are going to hit those because mm-hmm. you're putting yourself out there. You know what I mean? Like if you don't put yourself out there, you may not get that stuff. But you also won't won't get that. <laughs> you won't grow. <laughs> you won't grow in it. So you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, Dan is a perfect example of kind of finding ways on, like he didn't go to school formally for graphic design or design, and that's also me. But he pursued it and was consistent about it enough that there were a time where people were coming to him for this skill. Now he's like, which blew my mind, honestly. <laughs> You know, they talk about imposter syndrome, where you're like, oh my gosh, like, how did I make it in here? Like, all these people are the ones who should be doing it. And then, like, you start, you start just living it, and you realize, like, wait a minute, that's everyone. Like, all of us who are here, at some point, are here for that same reason. All of us probably had that moment of, like, everyone else must know what's going on. And then you realize, like, so much of it is just, if you have the drive, you have the taste, you know, and then you get the opportunities you're in there's no like secret code that you have to say to get in there i i i I, I love it man i feel like um you can really speak to a lot of people because a lot of people won't necessarily be be doing this oh quit my job and go start this big thing you know what i mean but right yeah everyone can can create a, a world for themselves where they're in an industry that they really enjoy. Everyone can create that. Everyone. So true, dude. And now more than ever with like all the tools at our disposal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was true before and now it's like so true that almost it can almost be paralyzing for some people, I think. Just because it's like there's so many ways. How do I even start? The good news about that is you just pick one. You know, pick one, analyze it quickly. I think you you can figure out pretty quickly if it's not working or not. But like, give every give anything a shot for like putting the consistency in, putting in the time, and you you'll see something happen. You know, right. I believe it. I'm, I, dude, I, I love it, man. I love it. I love. It. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. I hope it's been super valuable to you. And you're now ready to take your audience building, your community growing to the next level to help you and help me build our empire, for lack of a better word, or just to build our thing. Um, Remember to stop by iTunes, Passion Behind the Art, and leave a review and subscribe. It's very important to me. It helps the podcast grow. And it makes me feel good to kind of hear from you guys, to know what you like about this podcast what it's done for you so jump on itunes and subscribe and leave a review passion behind the art be blessed